Hello and welcome back to another video. This problem we're asked where is this function h of x equals the absolute value of x minus 1 plus the absolute value of x plus 2. When is this function differentiable? So to figure this out, not worrying about the graphs or the formula of the derivative just yet, we need to turn this into a piecewise function that is going to be easier to derive. Now, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we can say, okay, for this half, absolute value of x minus 1. If x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, then this chunk is just going to be equal to x minus 1, right? Because you're taking the absolute value of a positive number, so it's not changing the value. If it's less than 0, then it's going to be negative x plus 1, because you're taking the absolute value of a negative number that's changing it to a positive number, which is the negative version of this. Same thing over here. If x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, then we're all good, nothing changes. We have x plus 2 is the value of that part. But if it's less than 0, then it's going to be negative x minus 2, the negative version. So writing out our formula for h of x, all right, when x is less than 1, um, or sorry, when x is less than negative 2, that's going to be our first. It's not usually how you write it. We can put it on the other side. If x is less than negative 2, then this will be negative and this will be negative. Therefore, we're going to have negative x plus 1 minus x minus 2. We're going to have the negative versions of both of these. And we can work out what that is later, but let's go to the other sections. If we're in between negative 2 and 1, then negative x plus 1, because this will still be negative, because we're still less than 1, plus x plus 2. Now we can add this properly, because now this has ticked over to being positive. All right? And if this isn't clear, then you can just plug in and say, OK, so for x is less than negative 2, uh, let's try x is equal to negative 3. OK, negative 3 minus 1, that's negative 4, that's negative. Negative 3 minus 2, that's negative. OK, they're both going to be negative. So that's sort of how you can see the actual, an actual example that might help you understand a little bit better. And then when x is greater than 1, then both of them are going to be positive. So. We have a simplified version of it over here. Negative x minus x is negative 2x. Plus 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Negative x plus x is 0. Plus 1 plus 2 is 3. x plus x is 2x. Minus 1 plus 2 is plus 1. And these keep the same domains. Negative 2 is less than x is less than 1. And if x is greater than 1. Adding in these, because that is when they're when it because it's greater than or equal to zero therefore we have to have these equal signs in here somewhere because the function has to exist somewhere at x equals negative two at x equals one but we have a piecewise function here and we can take the derivative of each of these pieces so in this case we have a linear equation so the derivative of this term right here negative two x is just going to be its coefficient negative two derivative of the constant is zero so just plus zero so that's we can ignore that if x is less than negative 2. Over here, we have a constant again. So that's just 0. The derivative of a constant is always 0. And that's if negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. Finally, linear term again, the coefficient is going to be its derivative plus Constant derivative is just 0, so 2 plus 0 is still 2, so we can just ignore the plus 0. And that's if x is greater than 1. Okay. So if we think about this, the function is going to be differentiable where the derivative exists. So when x is less than negative 2, the derivative is going to be negative 2. When negative 2 less than x less than 1, the derivative is going to be 0. And when x is greater than 1, the derivative is going to be 2. But at these points, negative 2, so these, these points are all good. At x equals negative 2 and x equals 1, you'll notice I didn't keep the equal sign in these new ranges for differentiability, these new domains, rather, because we don't know these yet. 
because when you're approaching from the left, that derivative is negative 2 for negative 2. And when you're approaching from the right, it's 0. So we can say this does not exist because it's different values for the derivative when you're going from the left and the right. When we graph it, it'll be a little bit more clear how that actually works. And then here, uh, for x equals 1, when you're approaching from the left, it's 0. When you're approaching from the right, it's 2. So this also does not exist. So where is it differentiable? Everything that isn't negative 2 or 1 in interferal form, that looks like this. Right, it's just doing your typical algebra intervals. Um, make sure you can see all that. You can. Um, we have the formula. We have the ranges where they're differentiable. Now it's time to graph them. Um, we have our piecewise function here. So negative 2x minus 1 is going to have a y-intercept of negative 1, and it's going to look something like this. This doesn't have to be super accurate. Uh, 3 is going to look like this. And 2x plus 1 is going to look like this. And OK. This is going to be when x is less than or equal to negative 2. It's going to be this line right here. So it's going to look something like this. When it's in between negative 2 and 1, it's going to go like this. Look, a close bracket or close circle to open circle. And then from there on, it's going to go like this. And if you notice, um, the values of these two functions are the same at this point. So that it's actually going to be a closed circle there. That's our, that's our graph of h. You can do it more like clearly with y-intercepts and slopes and actually doing it all out. But I'm just doing a rough graph, which is fine for our purposes right here. If you're actually doing this problem for a teacher, you might want to actually make it more clear. Um, but for the derivative, the graph of the derivative, it's going to be negative 2 up to x is equal to negative 2, so something like that. It's going to be 0 from negative 2 to 1, and it's going to be 2 greater than or equal to 1. It's going to look something like that, where you line up the closed circles with the equal signs. But this is your range, and this is your graphs. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next video.